We've almost come to the end now of the preparation stage. I mean, that's ready for pre-planting out of the daily tubers that were started off earlier in the year. And the one thing that's become apparent with all of these is there's no two are the same. In the UK, it's generally safe to plant out from the end of May through to the middle of June, after your last frost, wherever you are. So always watch the weather forecast. And here you can see them ready for their final potting. We'll start off with the Arabian Night because there's such an extreme with this. This one's really grown away, as you can see. Um, so I'm like a beanstalk and there's a little young shoot alongside that I will remove later on. I may make a cutting out of it, I may not. Um, but the main reason is to get the plant moved up. And here you can see the pots that they use. And I will keep them in these pots for the rest of the growing season. What I tend to do with my dailies is to, where the spring flowering bulbs, tulips and narcissus have died down, I tend to pop these on top to fill the empty space. Be a little bit careful. And then we've removed the shoot, we'll take care of it afterwards. Knock it out and see what the root system is like. And as you can see there, it's a pretty good root system. It's just ready for moving on. This, the roots are nice and white and young and they not become pot bound in any way inside the pot. So it will soon get out into the, the new fresh compost that they're there. And I like to use a peat free base, but you can use any good general purpose compost that you you like to use yourself. I always say it's best to stay with something you're familiar with before you start making dramatic changes. And put enough compost in the bottom just to sort of sit the base of the, the pot on. And when you put it in, I like to have the top of the tube itself about an inch, 25 millimeters below the internal rim of the pot itself. This is to give it a little bit of support there and stop it drying out. And this is essential that when you put them in and you begin to pot it that you really pot them firmly so use the fingers not the thumbs and as i say give it a tap from time to time just to shake it down and try to get the plant in the middle of the of the the pot not the the root ball um, because you want to give it as much chance to grow evenly as you can and obviously later on especially with a plant like this i will re remove the stake and put a firmer stake in and that's the one thing you must remember with dahlias they're very very fleshy stems um, slightest breeze give them as much support as you can um, slightest breeze may blow them over and snap them and that'll be all of six months work down the drain so it's best to put them inside a sort of boxing ring type thing four canes in the ground and the string round the outside to support them and there we are that's covered nicely pop the label in so we know what it is and then we move on to the next one and this next one once again is Arabian night but you can see it's completely the opposite it's small it hasn't grown so much it looks healthy um, the root system is still clean it's not so vigorous but you can see it there uh, but the interesting thing will, is, will, to, will be when we grow in Mr. C how they compare flower wise and you will select from the best to propagate next year and this is one reason why I like to use cuttings as opposed to using tubers like this um, I bought these earlier in the year purely simply because I wanted to grow some some dailies in the garden and I never dreamed it would, it would end up with them all different shapes and sizes. So remove the little side shoot to drive all the energy into the one main shoot so that you can get as much sort of growth on as you can. When you put these out, you will pinch the tip out at about anywhere from third or fourth joint up uh, to encourage side shooting. So you will get basal growth with them eventually. But the main thing for the moment is purely to get them established in the pond get them growing and ready to go outside and face a grown-up world. It's always surprising that when you pot a plant on, it always looks as if it should have been potted on a lot earlier because it looks right in a larger size pot. But these two are two different sizes and there's the cuttings that we will we will try. You could end up with two plants for free, but I'm not really interested at this stage of the season. And now we move on to Franz Kafka. And with these, it's not so much the difference in, in the height and everything else, but the, just as of the vigour of the plants. So you can see the ones perfectly healthy, the one on the right and the one on the left looks a little bit pinched and I wouldn't say virus at this stage, but I, I could be a little bit of green fly damage there somewhere. So once again, we look at the roots, the roots are nice and white and healthy, ready to go. Um, very similar with this, it's really, it could just be a weak 
mixed rain, uh, but we'll see what happens once they start flowering. But it's the same thing, we pot them on. So off we go again. Just get the same size pot with these. Uh, they'll, they'll quickly grow. The one thing not to underestimate with dahlias is their vigour. They grow at such a rapid rate, um, especially this time of the year, uh, when it's warm and indoors. I've, I've keep mine outside um, against a, a south-facing wall, and that helps them. If it looks like it's going to be a little bit frosty, then I just bring them into the shed and leave them there overnight and get them out the next day. It helps to keep them ticking over. I'd rather keep them outside now for the next couple of weeks because obviously it keeps them hardy and acclimatised to what's, what's going on outdoors. So it's sort of survival of the fitness at the moment. And it's the same performance as before. Try and get the plant itself in the middle of the pot and tap it down so it drops to the bottom and really firm it in as well as you can. It does help. We'll say it's, if it's loose, the, pet, the compost will just slump. And here you can see the weaker plant, and it really does look sad. I don't know. Um, I'm spraying it there with um, an organic um, uh, insecticide. It's, it's a fatty acid, really. It just burns the, 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 the scale of the plant. And we'll see what happens with it. I've got some, what they call, plant invigorator somewhere, which is a, a foliar feed, and we'll try that later on. So now we'll move on to the reason all these happened. I went out to buy David Howard and came back with this mixed bag. And now the, the buns I had to David Howard is the worst. And the little chap's still with us, hanging on. Little um, shoots just growing there. I'll see what happens. It may not make a plant this year. But the one we have is looking fairly strong and vigorous. Uh, not such an overdeveloped root system, but still it's nice and young and white and it'll, it'll grow for us. And I shall use this as a stock plant and propagate from it next year. That's the one thing about it, it's, it's, it's with dahlias, is when you get a good one, if you hang on to the tubers, then because it's vegetative propagation, all of the plants that you will propagate from that will be identical. So there it goes into the pot. And this is the last one, and hopefully the last one for this year. And they, they'll stay in these pots now for the rest of the season. And what I tend to do at the end of the season is just cut them down to within about 15 centimetres, uh, 6 inches of the top of the pot. And I overwinter them on their side, mainly to let the water drain away. And it's always surprising. I was always one awkward one, and it's this one. I just couldn't get it right, whether I was losing concentration or just what, putting it in, taking it out, putting it in, trying to make it fit. Um, but the best thing is, is to say that you you make sure that it does sit properly. And um, there we are. You don't just get sloppy about it and sort of say, oh, that will do. Um, that's not good enough for gardening. So, yeah, we, we've got it there. And it looks quite healthy, as I say, I've got to say that, you know, I have no, no worries about this. And you have to keep spraying these during the season because green fly love them. Slugs also love them, but the green fly can't get in there, can transmit virus, uh, can also distort the fruit buds, sorry, the flower buds, and um, it loses its performance. And the one thing that you should do is never spray in bright sunshine. Always pick a, the evening after the bees have gone to rest or on a cloudy day, but always try and spray in the evening after the bees have returned to the hive. And now we'll return to old Tom Tiddler and let's hope, so I'm just, just so he doesn't feel left out, giving him a little top breath in there in the hope that some of the nutrient in the fresh compost may just help it spur. But as I say, this, this is just something you know i'm doing now as a, as a personal um project really i just wanted to grow i want to get something from it if i can get a cut in i'll be happy um fingers crossed as you can see there and here now with the cuttings that we took earlier on you can't take cuttings from dealers all the time as long as the, the stems are not hollow um, and just strip them back remove as many leaves these are very fleshy the stems are very soft i'm honestly not expecting them to survive i'll keep them in the cool shed somewhere, a little bit of hormone on the bottom, and then put them into some a mixture of silver sand and John Innes seed and cutting compost, very low in nutrients. This one is probably the best of the lot, um, and these are the two 
Arabian Nights here and um, the other one we got is Franz Kafka which is very very soft and you can see how thin and fleshy the stem is there um, so we really are pushing it but as I say just as a demonstration of what you can you can do and that's all that you need and the most important thing is just to prevent them drying out. I wouldn't cover them with polythene or put them under glass this time of the year as long as it's cool and you mist them over every day, hopefully. Um, they root very quickly and hopefully they will go through. But you can see this cut in is almost about sort of as thin as cotton, um, but we leave that one on and we we'll see how it goes. And I'm wearing gloves because a couple of weeks ago, um, I don't know what happened, whether it was a plant in the garden, something I touched or what, I don't know, but I ended up with a, a poison thumb. So I'm not taking any chances this time. Um, it's the first time in all of my gardening career that I've, I've worn gloves, but I will make sure that it's so painful and uh, it caused me a lot of sleepless nights that I don't want to go through that again. And the last thing we do is to give it a water in and then that will wash the compost around the base of the, the cutting itself. Let it drain through, it'll fill the bottom up and then we leave it in this little container, as I say, in the shade and give them a misting like this every day, just a light misting, don't overdo it, they'll rot. And here they are, all ready to go and take their place in the garden in a couple of weeks. Dior, and thank you for watching. Goodbye for now, but if you would like to see any more, please hit the subscribe and like buttons.